so for our problem, we have this graph with uh, y equals x over 3 and y equals square root of x. And for part A, we're trying to find the region, um, the shaded region between each graph. So the first thing we got to do is find the intercept here because we're going to need to integrate from 0 to this point, whatever it is. So we have square root of x set it equal to x over 3. 3x three to the 1 half equals x. 3 equals x to the 1 half. This Aaron, do we have, oh, I have a 9. 9 equals x. So you know that this point here is when x equals 9. So with that, we can integrate 0 to 9. That's what we got so far. And to find this area, we got to have this line minus this line. And that'll, that'll find the area. So in parentheses here, we have square root of x minus x over 3. dx. Can't forget the dx. Um, okay, so this is a calculated problem. So with this, you could just integrate this graph and find from 0 to 9. But if you don't have a calculator, you can do this. Find the antiderivative. So 2x and 3 halves over 3 minus x squared over 6, and you're finding that from 9 to 0. Want to move over and see? And then just plug in the values. So, it's kind of busy work, but, oh well. And this side just comes out to be zero, because if you're plugging in zero, it'll be zero. There's your solution. There's nine halves is the area. Okay, so for part B, we're going to find the volume of the solid, R, when R is rotated about the line x equals negative 1, which is right here. So since this is empty space, it's going to come out as a washer. What's a washer? A washer is when the center of the solid, when looked on from above, is just empty area and it's not accounted for. Okay. So it's going to look something like this. This is empty area. Okay. So the small radius here would be... And Professor, is this going to be in terms of x or y? This is in terms of x right now. Okay. All right. Uh, actually, no, this is in terms of y. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. But why is that? Is it because uh, of these lines here? You need to have them, or is it this it's, way? It's is it vertical or horizontal? It's going to be this way. Horizontal? This line subtracted by this line. The right line subtracted by, so, uh, so it's right line time. minus left line? Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Thank y. you for clarifying. So the small radius is going to be y squared plus 1. And the larger radius, capital R, is going to be 3y plus 1. Okay, so now we need to find the y-coordinates 
where these two lines intersect. So to do that, we set 3y equal to y squared. So we divide by y. And you get 3 equals y. And another solution for this would be y equals 0, because if this side is 0 and this side is 0, they're both 0 and they equal each other. Okay. So 3 equals y, and 0 equals y. So does y equal the 3 when x equals 9 from before? Definitely, yeah. Okay. So now we want to take the derivative of the outer radius and minus the derivative of the inner radius. So the derivative so like the area of the circle minus the area of the, the circle? The area of this circle minus the area of that okay. circle. Rotate around the line x equals negative 1. Okay. So to do that, we set up this integral. We set it from 0 to 3. Makes sense. And we put a pi on the outside because it is the area of a circle. Okay. So that's big R, okay. Mm -hmm. And we always have to remember to set it to derivative of y, since it's in terms of y. Okay. So then to complete this, if you do not have a calculator, you would have to foil the inside, just multiply. Just like I did before, huh? Yeah. Okay. Just and you would come out with 7y squared plus 6y minus y to the fourth. Okay. And that's after foiling. Yeah. And, okay. Cool. Everything good, Professor? Uh, yes, everything's good. Okay. And at this point... Do you just plug in values? No, you're going to have to take the antiderivative of oh, this. Oh, yeah, okay. You good? Yep. Okay. So the antiderivative will come out to be Okay. Okay, and at this point we just need to plug in 3 to here and okay. subtract by the plugging in 0 to here. And is the 0 just going to be 0 at the end? It's just all going to come out to equal 0. Yeah. Okay. So, do you're so smart, here. Professor. Oh, thank you, I know. This is when we plug in 3. Okay, so that's just 3 cubed. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think you're missing a parentheses, Professor. Uh, I don't think so. There.
No. You sure? We're not. Definitely not. Quiet. <laughs> Sorry. We're missing a parentheses. Yes, we right are. Right here. Good job catching that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Learned it from the best. Good. And then the next part is just going to be zero, so we're not even going to mess with that. that. Okay. Yeah, so this is just basically where all our okay. answers are going to come And what does from. that come out to be? Well, this part comes out to be this part plus this part, these two. Okay. They come out to be 90. And then we're going to subtract that by 243 over 5, which we get from right here. Okay. And all this is going to be multiplied by pi? By pi, because it's the area of the circle. Okay. And so this is going to come out to be. Oh, we can just do this last part. Okay. We're going to multiply this by 5. We're going to get 450. Or minus 243. All over 5. This is going to all come out to be 207. So the answer is going to be 207 pi over 5. Okay, and what does that afterwards, what does that mean? That means it's the, basically, right to the beginning it's the here. area of this. Okay, and that's a volume? That's like a volume? That's the volume. Okay, from 0 to 3. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Professor. Okay, Professor, let's get started. All right, so we're almost done with the problem now. We got the last part. So we have R, and that's going to be the base of a solid. And it's got square cross-sections that are perpendicular to the y-axis. So it's going to be this way. So what do we know about the square? Trying to find the area. That looks like I'm going to need a new marker here. Uh, none of these markers work. We need to get a Promethean board in this school. There we go. So, we're going to find the area, because we're going to integrate again to find this area when um, they have square cross-sections. So, we got to find the area of the square. Simple. We have x. This is x squared. So what is x equal to? We're about to get there, student. Patience, please. So the x is just going to be, since it's perpendicular to the y-axis and it's these lines, it's going to be the right line minus the left line, and that's going to be the x. So that's just going to turn out to be 3y minus y squared. And remember, since it is in terms of y, we have to have this as y instead of x. So this is your x. And from the previous problem, we know that this is um, when x is 9, y is 3. So once again, we're going to be integrating from 0 to 3. And this time, we're just following, we're just going to integrate the area of the square. So 3y minus y squared, and all of that is squared. And don't forget your dy, because the AP people will take off points if you forget your dy. Remember that. Okay, at this point, this is a calculator problem, but if you don't have one, no worries. You're just going to FOIL, so you're going to get after foiling, still at this stage, get y four, y to the fourth, 
minus 6y to the third plus 9y squared. Now we can take the antiderivative. Professor, you forgot the dy. Thank you. Those AP people. You're absolutely right. I don't know why that slipped my mind. You must be getting old. I might be. Might be time to retire. So now we just take the antiderivative of this, which is going to turn out to be y to the fifth over 5. Can you see that all right? Mm hmm. All right. Minus 6y to the fourth over 4. Looks like a 4. Plus 3y cubed. And we're taking that from 3 to 0. So, here we go. We're going to plug in some values. Gosh, math is just so fun, Liam. So glad I made this my life's calling. This is the reason I wake up in the morning. Okay, so this is with the three, you plug it in here. And just like in the other two parts of the problem, this section is just gonna end up being zero because you plug in zero for y it will just turn out to be zero. So we don't need to worry about that part anymore. Now, here we go. Some big numbers down here. That's why you better memorize your power tables. Quite a big number. These are big numbers. Can I come over here and get a better look at these big numbers? Just a lot of fractions here. It's good to have organized work. Wouldn't you say, Liam? Uh, I'm not really sure. Alright, and here we go. Just simplify this, and you, the answer comes out to be 81 over 10. And that is your answer. Very so cool, all the way professor. Back the beginning of the problem, that is just when you have r as the base of a solid filled with squares and an infinite amount of squares here. You find the area of the squares, you integrate from 0 to 3, you get 81 over 10. Cool.